Hey everybody, Chief Meteorologist Brad Petovich here. Big severe weather outbreak is going to unfold in the next 24 hours in the middle of the country. Now that same system is heading to the Carolinas. Likely not as severe, but it is going to bring a ton of wind. And wind is going to be the story of today's weather vlog. Now here's the system. You can see it out west. It's just entered the west coast. It's a big sprawling area of low pressure. And for those that don't understand, low pressure, the lower the pressure the stronger the storm is and when low pressure forms in the atmosphere it's basically like a dip in the in the atmosphere it's a thinner layer or think about a big trough or valley and what happens is air wants to rush to fill that gap or hole and that rushing of the air is what creates wind pressure differences between high pressure and low pressure high pressure is a mountain low pressure is a valley and when the air wants to balance those out the air will rush from high pressure to low pressure to fill it in and you get really really strong wind energy in this case, we've got strong wind energy all over the place. And as this pushes east into the plains, we are going to see a doozy of a severe weather setup. So let me show you the severe weather outlook for today. We'll turn it on. We should start to see some severe weather here in the middle of the country, uh, maybe later today and tonight, but it should be pretty isolated. Tomorrow is the big day. This is Friday severe weather outbreak. You could see the setup here um, in two areas of highlight. We've got the out outlined area up here and down here where there could be significant tornado risk. Um, around the Memphis area, then up here in the uh, areas of uh, Iowa, Illinois, and northern parts of Missouri. And then we go into day three, which is Saturday. The system is weaker, but there's still a risk on the East Coast. Let's go back to day two, because this is the day we're going to be watching closely. So you see our areas highlighted. Those are the big concern areas. Let me kind of show you the probability of tornadoes, because this is pretty significant. Green is 2%. You get into the mustard, that's 5 Then you have 10% in the yellow, and then this brighter yellow is 15%. So that's pretty significant for tornadoes. Remember, on a given day, the chance of tornado is near zero, so 15% is literally 15 times higher. So it is crazy to see something that much higher um, up there. Now, hail over a big area, but the wind, wind probability is really huge area, and also a really enhanced area up in parts of Iowa. So the wind, to me, is what is the biggest concern with this system as it pushes east. And let me show you the future cast of this. So we'll really stick with the short range rapid refresh stuff. We'll go through today and you can see some scattered showers developing into tonight. Notice some isolated storms and this is why we'll probably see a few isolated storms tonight. But then we go into tomorrow. This is after midnight. Watch this system unfold here um, as we go into tomorrow morning. Again some heavy rain there but this is the area we're watching right here. Again and I'll pause this right here. I'm going to go back and, and put on the categorical. So again, th those are the areas we're watching right there. See that? Okay, so let's go through time. And you see the two areas of concern up here, these individual cells, and then these down here. Oh, watch. Look at those super cells explode in Iowa and Missouri. Yeah, the these are the ones, if we're going to see long, big track tornadoes, they're going to be up here in Iowa. I, think. I do think there'll be some down here, but I really think uh, up there, because you're closer to the low, you're going to have so much more in, uh, wind shear or helicity, we call it. I mean, those are massive supercells. That area up there, tornadoes. These, while there could be embedded tornadoes, really going to be about a wind threat as this line of storms. This will be a, 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 ma a nasty line of storms that continues to develop and then pushes off to the east and heads towards the Carolinas. Now, this is midnight, so this is going into Saturday morning early hours of Saturday morning and, and, and then we stop here with the data because this is a 48 hour forecast cycle. So you see this line is pretty well together. It's likely going to make it to the mountains pretty strong and then probably weaken a little bit as it pushes east and then re-intensify in eastern North Carolina. So that progression is going to be key and all along the way we're going to see really strong winds. Now what you don't see here is even outside of those thunderstorms there's going to be a massive amount of wind energy associated with this system. Let me show you that. So let's go back and focus on those winds because these are just the surface wind gusts. Look at the winds coming into the plains. I mean, that that is just crazy. You start looking at some of these winds over 40, 50 miles per hour, and that's not even in the actual thunderstorms. That to me is what I am really going to be concerned for the Carolinas because a lot of people will be outdoor activities and there's going to be a lot. I mean, look at this wind. I mean, this is going into, I mean, off the charts wind speed. You just don't see wind energy this strong. And any way you can get that transferred to the surface, you're going to see some big time issues. So you can see already, you know, this is 2 a.m. On, on Saturday morning. We've got winds over 35, 40 miles per hour. Back in the mountains, we could see 50, 60, 70, 80 mile an hour winds. Let me kind of show you some of these wind speeds indicated in the guidance. So I'm going to go through time. 
We'll go through Friday. Again, look at these winds early Saturday morning. So two o'clock in the morning. You notice the gust around 35, 40. We go into early um, on Saturday morning. Let me back this up. I kind of jumped the gun there a little bit. Um, this is 2 a.m. This is 8 a.m. Look at some of these wind speeds. I mean, 30, 40, 50 mile an hour gusts, certainly possible. That would bring down trees and power lines. We go into Saturday afternoon. We're still gusting over 35, 40 in the mountains. Some 70 and 80 mile an hour winds showing up. And then we go into Saturday night, 8 p.m., still howling. The winds really don't start to calm down until late Saturday night into Sunday morning. We wake up Sunday, things are much calmer. Um, right now, this is the max wind gust forecast from the Weather Service. I think it's probably conservative, but you're looking at 40 to 50 mile per hour max gust across the Piedmont. And in the mountains, gust approaching 60 to 80 miles per hour. So what you really need to plan for this weekend is not so much the severe weather, which I do think there's an outside chance that we're going to see some, but the overall threat of winds, damaging winds, looks very, very significant at this time. And also, any storms that can, can get going in this environment potentially could have even stronger winds and isolated tornado risk. Though the risk overall for us is much lower than what we're seeing to the west. So again, the wind is going to be the story for us, but let's recap that severe weather outlook. We'll go back here. That's today. Friday's big outbreak to our west. And then as we go into Saturday, the risk is much lower. So stay weather aware. I'll have updates today and tomorrow as we get you ready for this big windstorm going into Friday night and Saturday.